do or die. Do or die. And uh, I was dying a lot in the second quarter. Um, boy, that was ugly basketball. And I think that we followed it up with a very nice third quarter and a fourth quarter where we were able to outscore our, our, our whole first half. We had 21, whereas in the third, we had 22. In the fourth, we had 23. And, and I felt like Angela Staffolino uh, played her best game as a Duquesne Duke. And uh, those are the expectations I have for her uh, every game. And it's not just an offensive type of thing. Uh, I felt like Angela defended correctly. And that's been her biggest drawback. Um, really happy for her. I thought Connor Richardson with nine and seven uh, and really good defense throughout the game. Uh, those seven rebounds weren't just where the other team conceded rebounds and she just happened to come up with it. She was slicing through the lane and coming up with big rebounds. Those were big rebounds. Um, you know, Bree Thomas, we challenged at halftime. She had one rebound and a block in 11 minutes. And I told her that, you know, you can't play if you're going to put up goose eggs. You have to do something. And, and her second half was outstanding. Uh, and I'm really happy that as a senior, she gets to leave her home court with a win. And then you have Amadea. I love her. She's a great kid. A great kid. Uh, while we were waiting for George Mason to finish their press conference, she went up and got a lifting session in. So after playing 29 minutes, she went up to the weight room and did a weight lifting session. That's Amadea. So thanks for being here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. We defended, uh, and I was happy with the way that we defended. Um, you, you have to be happy with that. I, I thought we drove it to the basket. We had numerous shots at point blank at the rim, and credit George Mason for coming from behind to get the block. And it wasn't just the 6'6 girl blocking it from the front. I mean, they had numerous blocks from behind, and they did a nice job with that. So, you know, credit them. Um, I was glad to play without Chass. It's a good challenge. It's a healthy thing to have to play without your leading scorer and find ways to win. Um, we're excited about having Chas back on Friday, and she will be. Um, but to play without her today really challenged us, all of us, our coaching staff and our players. It's actually a 2-2-1, and uh, we just have different pickup points. Uh, it, you know, when, when you scout them, you can see that they have the, the, the bigger point guard who maybe not as, as athletic, and then they have a, a smaller point guard who has a harder time seeing over people. And so we felt like we wanted to speed the game up, and after made baskets, you know, gives us an opportunity to do that. And uh, you know, we, we forced them to call a timeout, and we had some other uh, deflections. And I, I'll take a deflection just as much as I'll take a steal. And um, you'll probably see that press a little bit more as we go forward over the next uh, week. And then um, in the, starting in the third quarter, heading out of the fourth quarter, you guys went up 26 to 6 run against George Mason. Uh, you know, what was the key to that success? I didn't know it was 26 to 6. <laughs> um, what was the key? Um, I thought Nina Ajo being aggressive, driving the ball. And then Yutsa, even though she was three for 15, she was one for 10. Her two shots that she hit in the, in the second half, it makes the defense have to guard her that much, strong, that much stronger because when she hits back-to-back -back shots, and then she got fouled on that one three-pointer. It was very clearly a foul. Um, you have to guard her. And you have to expend so much energy, energy as a defender worrying about her that it's going to leave other people open. And, you know, Angela Staffolino stretches the D and hits her three, and then she was popping a lot, and they have to come out and guard her. And uh, that's a real team effort when we went 26 to 6. And uh, that is the definition of a team effort. Really happy with it. And then I think in, I think in the second half, 
we may have only had two or three turnovers, which was really good. Well, we don't start Chass at point guard. Chass is really, you know, and, and everybody thinks that. We look at Chass and Utsa both as point guards. And like in the past when we had um, Chastity in, in, in a- April and then April and Liv in years past, we like to play two point guards at the same time. Um, I forgot the question. <laughs> Just, uh, well, how happy were you with the, the, ball, the ball movement? movement. I'm sorry. Um, I'm very happy. You have to be. Um, we, we, Matt, Coach Matt, uh, our offensive coordinator, did some tinkering with some of our plays, and uh, it was highly effective. Uh, a couple things we didn't even run uh, that we'll save for George Washington, um, but we had good ball movement, and then we were able to attack the basket. I thought Connor Richardson did a great job attacking the basket. I thought Yutza got to the basket. I thought Nina Ajo got to the basket. Anytime your guards are putting that kind of pressure on the defense by driving it hard like we did, you're going to have a lot of success. Uh, you're either going to go to the free throw line or you're going to make them. And uh, we were able to do that. You had a decision to make with that fifth starting position with uh, Kadri getting the body of work that she's had in her career and being a head starter. And Nina, who's shown more aggression than a starter, what led to the decision for Kadri in? And was it keeping her confidence up or was there more to it? I think it's a little bit, uh, you know, we were going to start Bree, and Bree is so versatile. I mean, heck, we could have played her at point guard, and, and she can do that. She's done that in the past. Uh, we were going to start Bree. I'm, I'm going to start a senior on, on her last game at home, and I'm going to try to play her as long as I can because to those kids, it does mean a little bit more. They don't want to go out with a loss. They're going to try to win as, as much as they can. Um, and, and, and any kid is, but it's more important when you're a senior. It's just that simple. Um, the reason for Kadri starting is nobody else really stepped up. You know, Ange was okay in practice. AP is getting better in practice and pushing. Um, you know, Kadri's been the best one out of the group, and so she got the nod. Uh, Kadri's also our best post defender. And if I'll be very frank in saying that if Ange can produce like this offensively and then defensively not miss assignments, Ange's minutes will go up. And she'll play more because Kadri's got to be more productive. She had seven rebounds. That's fantastic. But you can't have three turnovers and you can't shoot two for seven. Um, I love Kadri to death, um, but we need her to have more consistent offensive production. It can't be just defense. And she's a very good defender. But we need more from her from an offensive perspective, and it, especially as we play three games in three days, hopefully. This time of year, how much do you weigh what you see in practice versus the consistency of what you use in games, given that it's tournament time and the margin of error is much smaller? I do a lot of thinking. A lot of thinking. All the time. And you're always thinking about combinations and who has maybe played well in the past, who is playing well now in practice, and it never leaves you. And that's why you see so many coaches that are mentally drained because you're always – thinking about that in your head. Um, you have to weigh all of those things in and then make a decision and then understand that when it comes to game time, hopefully you've made the right decision. And if you haven't, you've prepared the other person or persons to go in and give you quality minutes. I thought we did that today with Angela Staffolino. Frankly, I think we did that with Hallie Bovell. I thought Hallie Bovell played three or four minutes, and those were three or four good minutes where she defended. And that's what her role is, to come in and spell Connor and defend for a couple minutes. Her minutes would have been extended, but Nina Ajo played really well. And so that's a good thing.